The heat of Canada summer is transiting directly into the Canadian real estate market. After huge declines, 50, 60, 70% in sales in early spring, we're now seeing massive rebounds. And in many cases, real estate markets in Canada are now exceeding their 2019 sales levels. We're seeing monthly sales records get shattered. We're seeing 10 year averages even being broken. So are we seeing that pent up demand in the spring market now buying the summer? There's more to the story. Is there a added pressure being put on a Canadian real estate bubble or is Canadian real estate more resilient than a lot of experts had maybe anticipated? I've got data from most of Canada's major real estate markets. I'm going to break it down. We're going to talk about what happened in the month, where they are year to date, and maybe a little insight from local real estate agents as to what's going on in those local markets. So this is your August 2020 Canadian real estate market update. Hey everyone, welcome back to Bald Prairie Real Estate. If you're new here, my name is Matthew Fife, I'm a real estate agent in Regina, Saskatchewan, but I'd like to be known as your favorite real estate agent on YouTube. So if you like getting up to date on Canadian real estate, and I'm guessing you probably do, seeing as you clicked on the video that's all about the Canadian real estate market update, well, go ahead, hit the subscribe button right now so you're not gonna miss any more of my market updates. Plus, every week I do educational videos on a specific real estate topic. So if you like keeping up to date and getting some great real estate knowledge, Go ahead, smash the subscribe button, and give me a like for this terrible bad dad joke. What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. The spring market in Canada is almost always the hottest part of a real estate market, but we didn't get that this year. Everything got put on pause, and we saw huge drops, 50, 60, 70% in some areas, and the number of homes sold, and listings dropped basically in the same amount. Now as things have started to reopen, we're seeing a huge surge in buying activity, but listings haven't quite caught up yet. So what we're ending up seeing is prices are continuing to rise across Canada. Every market is seeing prices jump up. Some haven't caught up to their 2019 levels, but for the most part, month over month, you're seeing continual increases in prices, bidding wars, etc. Some people have speculated that this might be added pressure to a Canadian real estate bubble that's ready to pop. Others are saying, maybe it's more resilient than we anticipated, or there's more government help to continue to keep this going. And I'm gonna talk a little bit later about that in the video. But what I am gonna go in this video is I'm gonna go through all of these major Canadian real estate markets. We're gonna break them down, look at the sales data and see what's going on. I brought back Edmonton, that was a popular request. And by far my most popular request was Ottawa. I had a ton of people asking for Ottawa to be added. So I've added Ottawa into this market update. Now. I'm not here to do crystal ball predictions on where the real estate market is going. Because even if you look back the last couple of months, that would be kind of silly. In fact, I did a whole video talking about CMHC's prediction that the real estate market was gonna crash by like 18 to 20%. And I've got that right here, I'm gonna link that. Because some of the predictions from the experts, and this was in early April when this just got started, were all over the place from price increases to huge price decreases. So that's not what this is about. In these market updates, I give you a snapshot of what's been going on in the market. I break down the sales data. I always call local agents in those real estate markets to go along with the data that's been published. To ask them, you know, boots on the ground. What are you seeing? What's going on? But enough talk, let's break it all down. We're gonna start in my market, Regina, Saskatchewan. Before we head out to the rest of Canada, we gotta talk about the best city in Canada, my hometown, Regina, Saskatchewan. And two months ago, we set a record for the most number of homes sold in a single month, 374. And then we just went and smashed that last month. We're at 384 sales in the month of July. That is a huge month. Anything over 250 is a fairly big month in Regina. And then to go over 300 sales in a month, massive, almost 400, crazy. We're seeing now the number of houses in the market is down, days on markets down, we're seeing multiple offers, places going for over list price. That buyer's market that we've been in for the better part of a decade is trending towards a seller's market right now. So July 2020 versus July 2019, number of new homes listed is up. Doesn't surprise me at all because that spring market got pushed back a few months, but the total number of homes that have come on the market versus last year is down about 10% and almost 30% versus two years ago. So that inventory level has continued to decline. We're at about 1,150 to 1,200 houses on the market. I think it was 1,170 when I uh, recorded this video here. 
and that's a little unusual. Normally you'd see in January listings would be low and then they would increase all the way through to June and then you see a little bit of a dip. We haven't seen that. We basically hovered around 1150 to 1200 pretty much the entire year. And because of that inventory shrinking, we're seeing prices start to increase. The benchmark price in January 2020 was about $249,000. Skip ahead to July 2020, we're $272,000. That's the highest the benchmark price has been in Regina since 2018. So we're seeing losses from 2019 have been eaten up and prices have increased all year long. And people that say you can't sell a condo in Regina, well, that's definitely not true. Of those 384 homes that were sold, 71 of those were condos. That's one of the biggest, if not the biggest months for condo sales we've ever seen in Regina. So we're trending from that sellers or from a buyer's market to a seller's market. Prices are increasing. We've got multiple offers, houses selling for over list price. These are all the signs of going towards a seller's market. How long this push is going to last in the city of Regina? I'm not entirely sure right now, but we're definitely on a hot streak. Okay, let's start out west in Vancouver. 3,128 homes sold in the month of July 2020. That is up 22% from June to, or sorry, July 2019 and up 28% from the month before. It's also 9.4% above their 10 year average the month of July. That's a really big month for them. Their listings are up 28.9% versus July 2019, which is up 2.8% from last month as well. Their benchmark price is $1,031,400. That's up 4.5% from 2019 and up 0.6% from the previous month. There's just over 12,000 listings active on the market right now in Vancouver. And like I said last month, Vancouver is often perceived as a heavily foreign buyer dependent market. So these strong sales a couple of months in a row is showing there's some more resilience in the Vancouver real estate market than maybe people anticipated. Moving on to Calgary, where sales are still down from the previous year, but they continue to improve. July saw a 12% increase versus July last year. There's still some ground to be made up in Calgary, but every month continues to get better. Listings were also up 12% versus last month, but the number of homes on the market is down 15% for the year. The number of inventory is also still below 4%. There's about 5,900 active listings to start the month in Calgary. Their home price index or benchmark price is 418,000 right now. That's down 1% from last year, but is up from the month before. Staying in Alberta, up in Edmonton, they had 2,100 homes sold last month. That's up 13.6% versus last year and up 5.6% from the month before. Listings were up 7.6 versus last year, but they're down 9.8% from the month before. There's about 7,700 active listings when they started the month. Inventory is down 15.5% from last year. And their benchmark price is $318,000, which is down about 2% from last year, but up 2% from the start of the year. Saskatoon saw 550 homes sold, which is up 41% from the July 2019 numbers. 816 new listings were also put on the market in July. That's up about 8.5%. There's about 1,480 active listings to start the month. That inventory is down 43% from last year. And the list to sell ratio continues to be above 68%, or sorry, 60% in Saskatoon. So we're seeing that city trend from a buyer's market to a seller's market fairly quickly here. The benchmark price is up 2% year over year and also up from the month before. It's about $296,900. Moving on to Winnipeg where the Blue Bombers, they still suck. Sales were up 32% in the month. Just under 1,900 homes were sold. There's about 2,400 new listings were put on the market. That's down 9.4% and their total inventory is around 4,400 houses in the market. Their benchmark price is $334,000 right now, which is up about 2% from the previous month. There's a serious shortage of inventory, especially below $400,000. That continues to drive that price up. Anything over $500,000 is more of a balanced market in Winnipeg. Quick editing note here. Yes, Winnipeg fans, the Blue Bombers, they still suck. I know you're the defending Grey Cup champs, but I am an Andrew Harris fan. We did play together in junior football, so I do wear my rider hat and my Andrew Harris jersey to Winnipeg and Saskatchewan games. How about Canada's biggest market, Toronto? Well, they smashed their July sales record. They were up 29.5% versus July 2019, and they were also up 20% versus the previous month. They had over 11,000 homes that were sold. 
Listings were up 24.7%. There's about 15,000 active listings, but that's down 16.3% versus last year. The benchmark price is up 10% from last year, about $880,000, and that's up 2% from last month. Those single family homes are really selling well in Toronto. The condo market is showing a little bit of sign of weakness, and because of that Airbnb shadow inventory that may be coming on the market, that's a segment in Toronto that there's a lot of concern about right now, but we're gonna have to play this out and see what happens. How about the nation's capital? Ottawa has been on an extremely hot streak for a number of months now. Their sales were 2,189. That's up 19% versus July of 2019. And it's an 18% increase over their five year average for July. Year to date sales are still down about 15% from last year. But if this trend continues, they're gonna close that gap really fast. Their average price for a single family home is a little over $560,000. That's up 16% versus last year. And this stat blew me away. In the month of July, 57% of all homes sold in Ottawa sold for over asking price. How about Montreal? Now you keen eyed viewers out there are gonna notice a little difference in these stats because I have gone from reporting just the island of Montreal stats to the entire Montreal area. So it'd be a little different than what you used to see. Medium price for single family was up 18% month to year, or year over year, $423,000. That's their median price for single family home in Montreal. Sales were up a staggering 46% across all residential segments. That's 5,300 homes sold just last month. Sellers also returned to the market. Listings are up about 38% year over year but the number of active listings is down significantly, down 24%. There's about 12,800 active listings in Montreal. That significant supply shortage continues to drive up prices in Montreal. I keep talking about Halifax as one of the quiet hotspots in Canada, and that trend continues with over 930 homes sold last month in the city. That's up 40% from the previous year. Their listings continue to dwindle with only 1,300 houses listed in the market versus last year, that's down 29%. Their inventory to start the month is a little over 1,600 listings in the market, down 43.5% from the previous year. Their sales to new listing ratio, and this stat is crazy, 98.5% of all the homes listed were sold. That's pushed their average price up over 10% from last year. They're just over $365,000 for a single family home in Halifax. Did I miss a city that you want covered? Well, let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can add that city to my next market update video. And if I do, I'll let you know, I'll respond in the comments and say, hey, I added your city to my next market update, check it out. And I appreciate all the suggestions for cities, I really do. Now, what's going on? Why are prices continue to increase? Sales volumes continue to increase? Well, there's a couple of simple factors here. Supply and demand is one of the most obvious. Listings just simply haven't caught up to buyers. Almost every market, as you saw, that listings are still trailing where they were in 2019, and we've got big demand from buyers. So until that supply problem gets corrected, you're gonna see bidding wars and prices increasing. We are seeing as well pent up demand. Buyers that would have bought in the spring are buying in the summer now. So that's why you're seeing these record sales numbers in June, July, and probably gonna be in August because those sales would have happened earlier in the year. But as well, we're seeing massive discounts on interest rates, and that is allowing people to spend more money or encouraging them to buy because that house that they wanted to buy has now become a little bit cheaper with those lower payments. So those are two huge factors that are playing into this. How long this run is going to continue? I don't have an answer for that. We are seeing a big push and eventually I do expect it will slow down. When that's gonna happen, I'm really not sure. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not into making predictions, especially with how crazy things are right now. That would be kind of foolish because it'd be very easy to be wrong with how dynamic things are, how quickly things are changing. And there's wildcard factors like how much intervention does the government want to have in the market? Nobody can speculate on that. So that's why I don't really make predictions. I just want to do snapshots of what's going on in the Canadian real estate market at the time when I make those videos. So if you're waiting for prices to decline to get into the market, or that's a fear you have that if you buy right now, prices will be lower. So you want to wait. Well, the real estate market doesn't flip on a dime. You're not going to see all of a sudden one month prices are going to crash. That's not what happens. Real estate moves very slowly. 
And that's because markets change very slowly. It takes a while for sellers to start adjusting their price to buyer demands up and down. As buyers stop buying at certain price points because they don't wanna pay that money, it takes time for sellers to drop those prices. So you're not gonna see all of a sudden one month prices are up and the next month prices are gonna crash. That's not gonna happen. If we are gonna see a price correction, it's gonna be over a long period of time. Inventory levels have to build back up. Almost across Canada, inventory levels are low. Until those start to increase, you're not gonna see much change in prices. So if you're waiting, you might be waiting for a while here before things start to change. It's not gonna be one month and then boom, things change. You're also not gonna see a massive glut of foreclosures come on the market all at one time. The foreclosure process in Canada takes a really long time, often the better part of a year from when a person stops paying their mortgage to when that house is actually sold as a foreclosure. So, you know, if you're expecting that once mortgage deferrals run out here in the fall, that all of a sudden there's gonna be a massive glut of foreclosures, that's not gonna happen. That will trail in well into next year before you see those results. If you're looking to buy a house and you're not in my market in Regina, I would love it if you reach out to me and many you have. And so thank you so much to all of you who have reached out to me because if you're not in my market, I probably have a really good friend in your market. They'll be able to help you and give you great information and insight to make sure you can have the most possible information when you're buying a house. So for those that reached out again, thank you so much. But if you are thinking about buying a house and you want more information about your local market, I'm gonna leave my contact information below so you can get a hold of me and I'll put you in touch with somebody who's gonna know that market absolutely inside and out. Now, while you might be waiting for prices to decline before you buy a house, do you know what you don't have to wait for? More real estate knowledge, because I've got a series of videos right here, and this is more focused on first time home buyers. It's gonna give you all the different tips, tricks, knowledge, terms you need to know, everything like that. So that series of videos is all dedicated to first time home buyers. But maybe you're just thinking, hey, I wanna learn more about real estate. Well, I'm gonna have a series of videos. I'm gonna put them up right here. And that's just more general real estate knowledge, not necessarily geared to any specific buyer or product type. So you can check out either one of these series if you wanna get more information. And as always, give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Thanks for watching.